Let's continue learning about the intruder. Task number five is completed, so we are on to task number six, which is um, so the battering, battering ram is another type of attack. As you've seen in uh, previous videos, there are multiple types of attacks. So in the preview just yesterday, we've seen a sniper. Now we're looking into battering ram. There is also pitchfork and cluster bomb and for that I'm actually going to start Burp Suite. Notice that I used the professional edition because I got a license and um, in this uh, if you start the attack box here you will be using the community edition. So we are on to task number six about the battering ram. Let's take a look at the battering ram attack type. Like sniper, battering ram takes one set of payloads. Example one word list. So let's go to intruder. For example, we are on here. I should be connecting to the VPN of TryHackMe. So let me connect. Mm -hmm. Then I should also probably start the attack, uh, the, the, the machine. So start the machine and we're going to see its IP in about one minute. So what we have to do here in the battering ram, like sniper, takes one set of payloads but unlike it, it puts the same payload in every position rather than in each position in turn. So for example, in this case, you have the username and the password, pentester exploiter. So, uh, Let's say in the sniper one, they have a they have three words in their word list: burp, sweet, intruder. Now, in the battering ram here, with these two positions, intruder would use the three words from before. So we have the same word list: burp, sweet, intruder. To make three requests in this situation. So in this situation, when it comes to battering ram, it would actually fill with each of them at once so both positions will be filled with the same word at once so if I'm actually going to copy this IP address and then put it in here let's see if we put it in here let's see if we get into something maybe we won't because I should probably do so this is the host on to support login so is this this is http 1 1 i believe i believe so let's do https and then uh, not go back but advance so let's actually go forward https and then we have the ip address we're actually going to so something's wrong with it because um, it's HTTPS because I should have selected accept the risk and continue so fail to connect to this one what if we go to what was uh, it was the support login so support login and this is a post request here so forward slash support login regardless uh, we do have it so one to five let's see this is uh, this is the the correct the correct address not the one that I posted so if we go to where's the login our products so there's no login regardless back to battering ram as I said it's going to fill with each of the words all at once so in this case uh, you'll have the burp in both username burp password burp as you can see here username burp password burp then suite user suite pass suite and then intruder as can be seen in the table, each item in our list of payloads gets put into every position for each request. True to the name, Battering Ram just throws payloads at the target to see what sticks. 
Answer to the question below. So answer as a hypothetical question. You need to perform a battering ram intruder attack on the example request above. If you have a word list with two words in it, admin and guest, and the positions in the request template look like this, username, password, what would the body parameter of the first request that burp sends be? So in this case, let's just copy this here and then I'm going to modify it here in the URL. So the first one is going to be admin, 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 admin. Let's just copy that and paste it here. Answer is incorrect. What, what would the body parameters of the first request, the body parameters, so username is admin, first request at burp suite sends B username admin and password admin that that should actually be it but without these silk rows so let's see okay so that is correct now the the other attack it's pitchfork so let me make sure we're good on time six minutes all right so two down two more to go after sniper pitchfork is the attack type you're most likely to use it may help you to think of pitchfork as being like having numerous snipers running simultaneously where a sniper uses one payload set uh, which it uses on every position simultaneously pitchfork uses one payload so the creator of this room has actually done a really good job by actually explaining this thoroughly and by actually showing you what the requests are so Muirland Oracle I've created I've uh, crit criticized you in the past but now I'm actually praising what you've done here so this type of attack can take a little time to get your head around so let's use our brute force example from before but this time we need to word lists one word list will be the username so it contains three entries so we have two usernames okay so uh, they uh, they assume that uh, these usernames have so Joel, Harriet and Alex have their password leak we know that the Joel's password is Joel Harriet password is this one and Alex's password is skill. We can use these two lists to perform a pitchfork attack on the login form before. The process for carrying out this attack will not cover in this test, but you will get plenty of opportunities to perform uh, attacks like this later. So in pitchfork mode, the requests are like this. So the first request is username Joel. So username Joel and password is Joel. Okay. The second request is username Harriet with its password and the third one is Alex with its password. So keep in mind you have two lists the one with the usernames and the one with the passwords. Again going back in here or maybe going back in burp let's actually send something to the intruder let's say send maybe let's look into the proxy here better not that one but this one let's actually send this one to the intruder just for the sake of actually seeing at it so pitchfork uses multiple payload sets as you've seen we have one payload for the username and another one for the password there is a different payload set for each defined position up to a maximum of 20 so in this case if this were a post request let's say we'll have username equals user and password equals pass and let's actually auto which does a fantastic job so in pitchfork we have a different payload set for each position so one payload set for the user and one payload set for the pass now the attack iterates through all the payload sets simultaneously so the what does what that actually means in pitchfork is that first we'll see let's say we have uh, list one 
so for user we have Joel, Emmanuel and John and let's say Mary and then pass we have admin one two three four Danny and Doe so in the case of a pitchfork attack the attack iterates through all the payload sets simultaneously so it uses the first payload from each set then the second payload from each set and so on and so forth this actually means that first it's gonna try the username Joel with so user Joel pass admin the second request user Emmanuel pass one two three four the third one user John password Danny the fourth request Mary password Doe let's actually see if we can do that let's say payloads so payload set one we should select the attack pitchfork then when we look into payloads we can see that there are two payloads and let's actually add usernames John Emmanuel Danny and Mary and then for the payload set number two let's say that we have let's let's look at what we've set here or yeah so let's let me control Z admin one two three four Danny and Doe so in this case back again admin one two three four Danny and Doe so this is our these are our two payloads payload sets one for the username one for the user and one for the for, for the password will leave everything behind just just for the sake of exemplification and for the sake of actually seeing the actual requests and I'm gonna start the attack and as you can see there are four even though this is bogus because uh, I've come up with um, for example I've come up with this because there is no actual request like this but just for the sake of it as you can see we 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 look at our payloads we can see John payload one admin and if we look at the results the first request is John admin the second request is Emmanuel one two three four so if we go back into we can see Emmanuel and the second position in the second payload is one two three four then Danny with Danny and Mary with Doe so back again here Danny with Danny and Mary with Doe so I guess this actually explains extremely thoroughly what the pitchfork attack looks like in reality now going back in here looking at the pitchfork takes as we've seen the first item from each list so on and so forth if we have two lists one with 100 lines and one with 90 lines intruder will only make 90 requests and the final 10 items in the first list will not get tested so it's better it's not not that it's better but it is optimal that you have for both payload sets the same number of items in the set this attack type is exceptionally useful when forming things like credential stuffing attacks we have just encountered a small scale version of this we will be looking more into these uh, later in the room what is the maximum number of payload sets we can load in the intruder in the pitchfork mode we have 20 let's see and that is correct and let me see how we are with the time here so we are 40 minutes in thus we're actually going to leave cluster bomb and maybe so test number eight and test number nine for the next video